My name is Jerry Toth. I'm the co-founder of Toak Chocolate. Toak Chocolate is known as the most expensive bar of chocolate in the world. Um, our flagship edition cost $365. It was aged for three years in a 50-year-old French oak cognac cask. It is packaged in a handcrafted Spanish elm wood box with the individual bar number engraved on the back. It comes with a 116-page booklet and even comes with tasting utensils to, to, to fully appreciate the aroma of Ecuadorian cacao. Most of us have grown up looking at chocolate like a, like a candy bar, like something you buy for $2 at a, at a pharmacy and you, you know, pop in your mouth and go on your way and you don't really think about what you're, what you're consuming. Uh, which is a total break from the way that cacao has been viewed for literally thousands of years through history. When we launched our first edition in 2014, the most expensive bars of chocolate on the market were kind of $8, $10, and even that was considered very high. Some people would complain, you know, how can chocolate cost $8? It used to cost $2. And then we came out with a bar that cost $260, all of a sudden it, it changed the paradigm a bit and, and allowed other makers to say, okay, you know, so how can we, you know, first of all, we can perhaps afford to raise our prices and people will not, not necessarily be, be turned away. And now what does that, that offer us? That offers us an opportunity to take, uh, to source our cacao much, you know, take that much more seriously, to really delve deeply into where we get our cacao, look for better sources of cacao, take our time with what we do, uh, produce smaller quantities so that we can focus much more on, on perfecting what we're producing. It's no longer a shock. It's now, okay, so chocolate is something that is like wine or like whiskey, and, and people are used to paying $100 for a bottle of wine in some cases. So we, the way that we approached our business, which, and this is maybe what you get when you have two kind of artist-minded people running this, my partner Carl Schweisser and I, I think in a lot of ways, um, have a lot of similarities in that respect. We started this with a passion to create something extremely special. We knew the message, um, and so we, we developed this product, we, de we developed the branding for it, we developed the message for it, without really focusing on the distribution channels. And so there is a, there is a struggle there in terms of literally getting, getting our product to people. Now how do we actually uh, bring it to people throughout the world? Um, what are the distribution channels we use? Uh, what are the sales techniques we use? How can we leverage our, this really kind of, this power, this interesting media story um, to reach, you know, reach a lot of, a lot of people um, without uh, a massive outflow of, of advertising funds and, and whatnot. Our, our product was aimed at, at the end consumer, at, at, re, at people looking to buy a bar of chocolate. Uh, re retail, you know, in terms of retail sales. And we've now been moving it towards uh, B2B, uh, B2B, the B2B market and partnerships with other luxury brands. We're working with uh, Mercedes. Um, we've, we're working with Hennessy right now, um, looking to build relationships in, in a lot of broad relationships in the, the whiskey world and integrate what we're doing, which is basically we taste we taste and pair our chocolate with whiskey, with other whiskey brands, um, with the hospitality industry, reaching out to high-end cocktail bars uh, and promoting our, our product through their channels. It, likewise, helping them promote their spirits and cocktails through what we do. When we first started, the kind of the the, the standard protocol in the luxury industry was, all right, you know, luxury, luxury we're really, we're maybe above social media. And that's changed even within the last three or four years significantly. And now, now luxury is, recognizes the fact that, you know, social media is how people are communicating now. And so you have to get involved. And I think we followed a similar path in, in the first few years we started it was not a major focus of ours. It wasn't a major priority of, of ours. And, and in the last two years, we've decided that we have, to, we have to have a presence and that we have to do it in a way that is becoming of a luxury brand. Um, so it, it's, there's a different approach to that than say just a standard 
um, kind of uh, a business that's that's looking for volume. We have to maintain our our you know our style, our look, our our message, um, but we have to connect with people, and so that's been a we, we lagged on that in the first few years, and now I think we're, we're just starting to catch up.